Here are four types of homemade moxa floss. These two are the ones that I just made. So you can see the difference in color. I hope, I don't know how good the light is here, but these two have been aged. This one since 2009. I mean, not that it's aging all this time. Is I mean, I made it in 2009 and, and this is what happens when it ages is it becomes very blonde looking. This one was made in 2010. And if you compare the colors, there's certainly a big difference between the green of the new floss and the gold or blonde or light color of the old floss. And so when it's able to sit with some light, with some um, time exposed to air, then the green is really volatile oils that evaporate. And that means that the aged floss burns more coolly, which is actually better. So herbs for internal use, newer, fresher is better. But for moxa, older is actually better. So this is really pretty good quality. Um, another difference if you're trying to figure it out is if you smell it, this smells like plants. It smells green. It smells like grass or something like that. This really doesn't have any smell anymore because like I said, all the volatile oils escaped already. And then another difference is the texture. So if I had the magnifying glass and I looked, this one I worked really fine. And so you, you know, even with a magnifying glass, you'd probably be able to see very little besides the fine fibers. But I didn't grind this one as much. I was impatient. And so I can see a little piece of debris there. And here's like a little stick that I could pull out if I had the tweezers, but I put them away. Oh, here they are. Um, and then also it's not an even color green. This one is you know more even color. I think this one's a little finer. Um, so this one's an even color green because it's finer, but this one really should be refined some more. Another difference is if I touch this, my hands feel clean. They don't feel like, ooh, I want to go wash my hands. But this one, I can feel, like comparing the two, I can feel this one is a little more coarse texture. It just doesn't feel so soft and fluffy. And um, there is, you know, more dust going to be on my hands from touching it. Yeah there. Um, and in fact, I wanted to keep these two separate because I'm aging them together. So I put the smaller one in a little bowl and I don't know if you can see, but there's some dust in the bottom of the bowl. But if it's really, really well refined, there shouldn't be any dust coming out of it. These are all different, more or less gold floss. Let's pretend we don't know what they are. Um, I mean, we know they're gold floss or that people are claiming they're gold floss, but let's just look at their characteristics. The first thing is looking at the color. And, you know, yeah, they're in plastic bags, but if we compare this color and this color, out a little bit. The one in my left hand is a little bit paler than the one in my right hand, so that's a sign that this one might be better. It might feel slightly softer too. Um, this one, it's close in color, but I think the one here is a little paler, which again makes it a better quality. 
The one in my left hand is a little lighter, which is this one. And I don't even remember where I got this from. I think I know where I got this from. There's a guy in Bhutan who started making his own moxa floss. He wants to sell it and he sent me a sample. I think this is it. And this one is definitely the darkest of all the ones here. So, um, you know, if you look, but it still feels pretty good and soft. So color isn't the only um, way of judging, but I would say by color, certainly this middle one is the best. So what are these? This middle one is a um, Japanese gold kind um, that I bought a long time ago from Kenshin when it was on sale. This one is a Chinese gold kind that I think I got from Blue Poppy a long time ago. And this is Korean gold, which is... Um, something you know that you can buy from various stores and actually the Japanese is the most expensive it's also the best quality but this Korean floss is easy to find and it is actually um, so much cheaper I don't know this is like 750 or maybe it's gone up to $10 a, a box where this is like, I don't know, $80 or something like that. So what you have to decide if you're a moxa snob, which a lot of people are and it's valid, especially if you're practicing Japanese style, then you may want to spend the extra cash. But if like I'm not a moxa snob, so like I'm open to all kinds of different things and everything has its place and there are many ways to do things and we also have to keep in mind what you can afford well you know the korean floss is fine with me and so much less expensive so you just have to decide what works for you uh, another thing about it is can you roll it into you know nice little cones they're not going to stand up on this, but yeah, you can. So, you know, you just have to decide what's good enough for you. So a number of things are going to influence. There are different species of artemisia that are used as mugwort and used to make moxa floss. And so that's the first influence. And of course, where it's grown and the soil it's in and the weather in that particular year. Another is how, how old is it when it's harvested? So is it harvested when it's new, you know, small leaves? That might make a finer quality than if they're like big old leaves that have been out until the end of the harvesting time. Um, and then there's how much is it ground? Um, is it finely ground and sifted or is it, you know, not as finely ground or all the little, you know, pieces of stem picked out or does it still have a lot of debris in it? And then how long is it aged and is it aged properly, you know, in the light and kept dry? So all of these things add up to the quality. And you can judge the quality by the color, by the aroma. Does it smell like plants or does it smell pretty neutral when you just smell it on your own? How much dust falls out of it? Looking at the texture, um, even with a magnifying glass, feeling it, like does it roll into a nice small cone or... Um, you know, does it not want to really roll? Does it leave your hands feeling dirty? These are all factors in quality. Okay, here's the last set. These are definitely lower quality. If we compare the color of the gold floss, um, you know, with these, we can see how much darker these are. Um, this means they weren't ground down very 
Well, it may mean that they were old leaves. They weren't sifted. They were older leaves. Maybe they were like really overly dried before they were ground into floss. Um, I've actually found I like to grind the younger leaves um, because after they age, they start out green, but after they age, then they become a nice paler floss that looks closer to a gold floss. Um, but if you grind leaves that are brown and not green, then they tend to end up looking more this color, no matter how finely you grind them. I don't always keep track of what I buy where. I think this is a kind that I've had for a long time. I think it came from a Chinese source. And mm, I don't know if you could see on camera, but there are all kinds of twigs and, you know, you can see all kinds of stuff in it very easily. You don't even need a uh, um, magnifying glass. And when you pick it up, there's a ton of dust underneath. It's like they didn't even really sift it. There's so much dust right here falling out of it. Whereas these two, like if I pick this up, bang it around, ah, maybe there's a teeny bit of dust, but there's nothing to speak of. And this one, even though it's pretty brown, there's uh, not much, I don't see any sticks or twigs or, you know, leaf matter. Um, with a magnifying glass, I'd see small pieces of like leaf matter, but not twigs. But, you know, it's not leaving dust or at least not very much dust, not like that. And so this one, it does have a little bit of dust, but not as much. And it does have some more visible twigs and, and stuff like that. So this one is, you know, here's like a little piece of a you know, something solid that's not mocks of floss. So between the three of them, this one is the lightest and has the least dust and the least debris in it and looks best. And this one is second best. And this one is horrible. I wouldn't even want to burn it because the leaf matter and the dust make a lot more smoke. So the more you refine it, the less smoky the experience is going to be. Another thing is the gold floss is used for direct moxa and so it has specific uses and you wouldn't use this to make a moxa stick. You wouldn't use this on a slice of ginger. The really gold floss is made to touch the skin and you can make tiny little grain of rice sized cones and burn it down to the skin and, and you really won't cause a blister if you know what you're doing. This kind of stuff should never directly be burned on the skin. Or sometimes people make tall cones and when it's burned, you know, two thirds of the way down or three quarters of the way down, then they remove it. It doesn't burn all the way down. But like the, you can't mix, you know, if I tried to roll this into tiny little grain of rice size cones, it's not really going to cooperate so well. You can't make such fine cones from it. Um, yeah, it's just not going to cooperate as much. So this though is fine for indirect mox if you want to do it on a slice of ginger or garlic or some, um, you know, herbal cakes that we'll talk about how to make in another video. Um, you could certainly make the larger size cones with this kind of floss and that's exactly what it's for. That's an ugly cone, but we'll talk about making cones in a different video. That's exactly what this is for. No need to waste the high quality stuff when you're burning a larger quantity that's not touching the skin. So I am not opposed to the lower quality moxa floss. You just have to use each thing for what it's appropriate. This one though, I, I wouldn't even bother using. Or if I used it, I'd put it through a sieve and get a lot of the dust out. But still, you can't redeem this. This is never going to be good quality moxa floss. So, oh, this smell. Let's see. It's a little herbally, this one. Yeah, you know, you can smell the plant much more than you can with the gold floss. So, so this is like a comparison of the quality. Um, 
gold floss is supposed to start with 30 pounds of leaves and end up with one pound of gold floss. Um, something like this, this really bad quality, might be two or three pounds of leaves make one pound of floss. Um, you know, and it gets progressively better as you go through the different levels. And so, you know, the more it's refined, the higher the quality and the higher the price. Um, so this is Moxifloss. Well, look at all that dust when I picked it up to put it back in its bag. It left this much dust. Don't buy that. Before you buy, check the quality.